In this video we'll be putting the x-axis motor mount and motor onto the machine and we will fasten the upper structural sides to the lower structural sides and we'll also add the table to the machine. We will start by preparing the x-axis motor mount. Insert quarter inch screws at three and a half inches in length into the motor mount as shown and add nuts on the other side to stabilize the screws. Add a second nut to serve as the spacer. Next two screws will serve as the bearing idler holder. These screws are quarter inch at one and a half inches long. Insert as shown. You'll add a nut as a spacer, two bearings, and another nut to hold the bearings in place. The two bearings are quarter inch inside diameter. In the next step, you'll fasten the motor to the motor housing. Make sure that the motor is oriented so the wires of the motor will not get in the way of its function. They should be either to the right or to the left. Use four number eight or number six screws. It also might be a M4 screw depending on the motor. Now the timing belt pulley needs to be fastened to the motor shaft. Align the pulley onto the shaft so that it aligns with the idler bearings. Once the pulley is aligned, you can tighten the set screw with an Allen wrench. The motor mount and assembly is now ready to be fastened onto the lower structural side. The two protruding screws will need to be inserted into the two holes on the lower structural side. Add nuts to these screws, and as you add nuts to the screws, you will need to position the nuts that are used as spacers on the other side of this part. Two final screws need to be inserted into this assembly to provide extra support. These two screws are quarter inch by three and a half inches long. Two nuts will be needed between the motor assembly and the structural side, one to serve as a spacer and the other to fasten the screw. An additional nut will be required on the other side of the motor mount. Fasten the bottom of this mount in place. In the next steps, we will fasten the lower structural side to the upper structural side. In this particular configuration, as you can see, there are many holes. Uh, this is the set of holes that would allow for the greatest z-axis movement for doing plastic printing, 3D printing. Um, it is suggested that you use the other holes for CNC work, so it will give it more stability when machining. Four quarter inch by two inch screws and four nuts will be needed for this part of the assembly. Likewise for the other side. Next we will insert the tension rods. These rods are threaded rods, standard quarter inch th threaded rods that will use the nuts and the threaded rods to tension the, the entire machine closer together so it hugs the, the table with rails tightly. So there will be no looseness in the table between the V-groove bearings. This rod will, will require two nuts on the outside and two nuts on the inside. The two nuts on the inside are just to keep stability. The two nuts on the outside are to provide for the tension. This is done on the front part of the machine and the back part of the machine. Also notice that these rods are as close to the table as possible to add as much tension and to maintain the shape of the machine as much as possible. These rods should be tensioned and tightened after the table has been inserted between the four V-groove bearings. Now the rods can be tensioned, but only tension them so the table is snugly fitted between the bearings. If there is too much 
tension, then the table will be difficult to move. If it's too loose, then you'll feel rattling. This may only require finger tightening to get it tensioned sufficiently. Once the rods are tightened, it is best to cut the rods short so they don't, they don't protrude outside of the body of the machine too much and file the end so it won't scrape if touched or hit 